rust heaps. And in this segment of Beer to Whiskey, we're doing another one of our Big John and Five uh, segments in which uh, we get our beer expert, uh, resident uh, beer expert here in Greenville, South Carolina, Big John Richards, and he picks some uh, a beer and uh, then we talk about it and he fills us in on, on all those details we should know. We're coming to you from uh, Barley's Tap Room on Washington Street. It's sort of the beer headquarters uh, in Greenville. It's the oldest tap room in Greenville. And John, what are, what are we drinking this week? Well, Russ, we're doing uh, Cigar City's Marshall Zukov, Imperial Russian Stout. We've been doing some fall beers here. Sounds a little scary. It's, <laughs> it's, it is a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's a big 11% Russian Imperial style, which is getting up there in the Holy alcohol moly, quadrant. Yeah. So, uh, sort of creeping hence, into barley wine. Oh, well, absolutely. Yeah. Hence the small pour. But uh, really, really wonderful, very smooth, very accessible at 11% for a Russian Imperial style. It's a, it's a neat little interpretation of the style. There's a lot of coffee, a lot of espresso, a lot of dark chocolate and cocoa flavors, um, the burnt bread crust stuff that goes on in these big beers like this. But it's real heartwarming and, and like soul food satisfying and really um, there's great cold weather, cold fall nights. You're going to want to reach for something like this. Where, where is Cigar City? Cigar City's in Tampa. Um, they've been down there... I really don't know. I expect they're probably 10 or 12 years old now. They've been down there for quite some yeah. time, um, making some really great beers, and have just joined forces with uh, Oscar Blues. So another one of those companies that's created a nice craft beer alliance without getting into joining the you know the big international yeah. forces. So we still have a you know an American-owned company, if you will. But it's nice that we finally get to have this. You know that the distribution network and then the brewing power behind Oscar Blues lets them brew some of these wonderful beers down in Tampa and bring them up here and we still get to right. experience them instead of having to you know, go 10 hours down there. We're in my territory here. I'm a, yeah. I'm a as you know, I'm a brown and porter and, and stout guy, although I'm flirting with ambers these yeah. days. But uh, uh, so I'm glad, I'm glad you chose this one. I'm, I, I don't think I've Absolutely. ever Absolutely, I think this will be a fun one for you, Russ, because it's, uh, it's like I said, that big, rich, satisfying, full-bodied beer that you sip. Holy cow. Yeah, that is yeah. nice. That is good. Yeah, and there's, it's amazing that at 11%, there's nothing really aggressive in there. Right. It doesn't burn. You don't feel the alcohol. There's a rich, dark, cocoa-y chocolate thing going on. Right. You put a, put a bowl of cherries beside this beer, and you just, that's your midnight snack or nightcap before bed, if you will, I guess. And, and I understand that, that uh, they market this beer as being the ideal thing for uh, drinking while in a ground war in Europe. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> well, it's named after the most famous Russian general, maybe of all time, certainly the one responsible as anyone else for the Battle of Berlin, so we right. uh, got that going for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, this is really good. Yeah, it's fun. That's, uh, so a lot of these get named after Russians or Russian things um, at, all the way back to when this style basically originated was uh, with the reign of Catherine the Great. And she, had, she was a fan of stout as well. So you guys were kindred spirits there. And she got a shipment of beer that had spoiled. And of course that didn't go over well. <laughs> so uh, so they, uh, an English brewer came up with the idea of brewing a beer of substantial depth a little more alcohol, toss in some hops, because you can hop a beer up like this with like crazy and not get right. that bitterness because right. there's so much other stuff going on. Sure. So when, when that shipment arrived in good condition, it became the thing that she ordered every time, and so it became known as Imperial Stout and then Russian Imperial Stout, and all due to the court of Catherine the Great. So here's, here's a, a question that somebody asked me in the last couple of days uh, that, I, that I couldn't answer, and I didn't have the energy to look up. Uh, <laughs> what, uh, where did stout originate? Stout actually came from Porter, which came from the invention uh, of Daniel Wheeler in the early 1800s called cylindrical roaster that would allow uh, roasted malts not to catch fire. So at some point, if you're drying roasted malts out or roasting them to the point where they're completely dry, they'll, they'll eventually catch fire and burn, and then they're unusable. 
but if you this cylindrical roaster will uh, actually spray water on the malt while it's being roasted so it keeps it from catching fire but it can get all the way down to black without ah, okay. without actually getting destroyed so you add a little bit of that to something like this and you create all those coffee and dark chocolate sure. and espresso and yeah uh, the, all that burnt bread flavor all that's so satisfying that so good. right <laughs> But that's actually, uh, a lot of people have it backwards and think that stout came first and porter came second, but porter was actually the, the beer of the 1700s and stout didn't come around so well into the 1800s. Anything else we should know? Or have we, have uh, we we've, covered We've it? covered a lot of it for five minutes, Russ. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of it. I, I told John this is like speed dating with beer, it's, uh, but it's fun. Um, and good for you. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so. Uh, that'll that'll do it for this segment of Big John and Five. And uh, again, thanks to the uh, Greenville's Beer Headquarters at Barley's Tap Room. And cheers! Cheers. cheers.